Skyrim has enveloped gamers into the world of the Elder Scrolls for 10 years now. Bethesda has decided to honor the legacy of the game by giving us another re-release in Anniversary Edition. It brings a lot of new content from quests, houses, weapons and armor. And what is up guys, Andrew from the Den Men here, and we will be going over the top 5 best things that were released when Anniversary Edition launched. There is a lot to go over in today's video, so get comfy, grab that bottle of hunting brew mead, and let's get right into it. Starting off at our number 5 spot, we have the enhanced graphics for the game. Fans of the game that play on the Xbox Series X and PS5 will instantly see the difference with their playthroughs, especially those that play on the PlayStation. They will be seeing enhanced graphics, a FPS boost, and better performance overall. Those who are already on the Series X will know what it feels to play Skyrim at 60 frames per second with it coming out a little while in advance, but the upgraded performance has been very interesting. You can really see the difference in the load times with it taking little to no time at all. People who have been playing Skyrim since it came out in 2011 will know that when load areas occurred, this would be the time to take a break, check your phone, or get a snack. It has been refreshing to say the least when it comes to seeing such little load times and has for sure been an upgrade for the game. The better graphics cannot be understated either, with the game looking absolutely breathtaking in its current state. Those who play on PC will see little difference, but for the console players out there, this has been a pleasant surprise. Next on our list is all the throwback quests, weapons, and armor. Most notably are things like the Cause and Ghosts of the Tribunal, but it even goes deeper than that. Bethesda released 26 new Creation Club content when Anniversary Edition came out, and the ones from older games have been a nice refresher for Skyrim. Things like the Bow of Shadows, Goldbrand, and the Bitter Cup have all had fun quests tied to them and are actually really cool to play with. The two major ones with Ghosts of the Tribunal and The Cause have also been nice callbacks to the previous games in the Elder Scrolls series. Both bring a little something to Skyrim that make the player reminisce on their previous adventures through the Deadlands or Cyrodiil and for the OGs even, Morrowind. In the case of The Cause, it really took me by surprise that they actually transported us to Mayrune's Dagon Realm of Oblivion from an existing gate. This was something that fans of Oblivion will for sure enjoy and be a nice little easter egg for the game. Even Ghost of the Tribunal took it up a notch with all of the callbacks to the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. I really enjoyed all the armor from Morrowind itself and it definitely makes the player feel how it was back when Red Mountain didn't erupt yet. All of the different nods to previous Elder Scrolls titles are one of the many features that Anniversary Edition did well and that is why it lands at our number 4 spot. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have the quaint life of farming and fishing. Both farming and fishing are two new creations that came in the Anniversary Edition, and I can for sure say they have been pleasant surprises. Especially farming with how it works, this one for sure made me enjoy the everyday life of those who live in Skyrim, the creation itself takes a different spin on the Hearthfire DLC that we got a long time ago now. I liked how the Dragonborn was tasked with building the farm from scratch with stables, places to sleep for your workers, and pens for the animals. I also really enjoyed being able to design both the interior and exterior of the home. Both sides of farming are fun to try out and has been one that is entertaining to complete. Fishing on the surface looks to be something that appears to be very one-dimensional, but when you see all that there is to the creation, it's easy to think otherwise. For one thing, the quest itself will take plenty of time to complete, and ends with the Dragonborn facing off against a giant mud crab boss. This was an unexpected twist, but was something that became very enjoyable in the end. Even the fishing itself has a lot of different layers to it with the possibility of using all the different fish in potions. There is also a feature where the dragonborn can place them in an aquarium to be shown off which is a very fun feature to the creation itself. As you can see, 
there is a lot more than just finding a body of water and clicking a button. Overall, I really enjoyed these two creations, especially because they are so different from the normal dungeon crawling that happens in Skyrim. Instead, the Dragonborn is able to find out what it feels like to be a part of everyday life in Skyrim and live the normal lifestyle. At our number 2 spot, we have the free creations that anybody who owns Skyrim can play. There are four in total, and each one brings something to the game that is very different from anything else. I really enjoyed each of them in their own right because of how unique they all were. Survival mode is probably the most distinct, with it being groundbreaking for the game. It lets the hardcore players out there know what it's like to face not only the enemies around them, but also the environment. This one changes the way we play Skyrim and is quite enjoyable. There is also fishing, which is as you know from our number 3 spot, gives the player a different way to play. Then there is rare curios, which brings all new ways to craft powerful potions. I really enjoyed this one from a gameplay point of view because not even knowing that I was using the different ingredients made it fit seamlessly into the game world. And finally, we have Saints and Seducers, which is one of my favorite creations by far. It's crazy to think that it became free when Anniversary Edition dropped, just from how large it is. It can for sure be recognized as a DLC size creation and is one that should be played on any playthrough. These four bring something different to the world of Skyrim, and that is why they land at our number 2 spot. And finally, the number one best thing to come with Skyrim Anniversary Edition is no doubt all of the quests, houses, weapons, and armor that came in the Creation Club. There are 74 in total with over 500 different elements to them, so there is definitely plenty to do in the Anniversary Edition. Even though some of them are quite small, like all of the alternate armors or the pet Nyxhound, there's also those that are decent sized, like the Forgotten Seasons Dungeon or Bitter Cup Questline. Each one of them fills a different need for Skyrim, whether that be new houses, quests, or weapons and armor to use. There are just so many different creations to choose from, and the variation between them is next to none. The best part about them is that they are an add-on to what is already a great game. There is just so much to Skyrim already that sometimes even actively looking for all of the new creations will just suck you into a completely different quest. That is exactly why all of the different creations are good for the game, and for that reason, they are at our number one spot. Skyrim is a massive game, and Anniversary Edition just made it even bigger. There are so many different and new features that were added into the game and have brought a lot of new faces to the continent of Tamriel. From all of the new creations to the free content and even console enhancements, it is easy to see why Anniversary Edition has been good for the game. Hopefully, the next time we see the world of the Elder Scrolls, it is not just a re-release, but a full game. To pass the time, there is still an amazing game like Skyrim to explore and adventure across, and Anniversary Edition has added a lot of unique features that are quite good for the game itself. But that is all for me now though guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, comment any videos you want to see in the future, and I'll see you all next time!